Most people know their cholesterol level, but almost no one knows their homocysteine level. You see, homocysteine is a simple blood test that can give profound insights into your cardiovascular risk, your methylation efficiency, your genetic vulnerabilities, and most important, your brain health. And best of all, unlike many advanced tests and functional testing out there, homocysteine is affordable, widely available, and modifiable. So in today's video, we're gonna break down what homocysteine is, its importance to brain health, what elevated homocysteine levels mean, and how you can balance your homocysteine to optimize your mental health. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So what is homocysteine? Well, homocysteine is amino acid produced as a byproduct of methionine metabolism. So when your body breaks down methionine, which is an amino acid found in protein rich foods, homocysteine is actually formed. Then the body should then recycle this homocysteine into methionine via folate and B12 and cysteine via B6 in the transsulfuration pathway. And this process is called methylation, which I talked about in a separate video. So if you missed that, go ahead and check it out. But methylation is essential for DNA repair, neurotransmitter production, detoxification, and glutathione synthesis, which is your body's master antioxidant. So let's now talk about homocysteine and its relevance in heart health. Because homocysteine or elevated homocysteine has been long associated with cardiovascular risk, and it can actually cause damage in the endothelial lining of your blood vessels. It can increase your risk for atherosclerosis or clogged arteries, stroke, and even blood clots. High levels can also promote oxidative stress and inflammation directly in the arteries. And so what's less focused on is homocysteine and brain health, which is where I find it to be most important. You see, homocysteine crosses the blood-brain barrier and acts as an excitotoxin when it's in excess. And elevated levels have been linked to things like depression and anxiety, cognitive decline and even Alzheimer's disease, poor memory, brain fog, and slow processing. It even disrupts neurotransmitter synthesis, especially dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. And chronic elevations may actually impair myelination, which is the process of insulating your nerves. And when this is impaired, it will actually impact nerve cell signaling or nerve cell conduction, which can actually lead to cognitive decline, mood changes, and those increased risk of neurological disorders. So that is why it's important to optimize your homocysteine levels. But here's the thing, optimal homocysteine levels are five to 7.5 micromoles per liter. But labs or those common labs often consider up to 15 micromoles per liter normal. But by that time, the brain and cardiovascular function and damage may already be compromised by that level. So that is why it's important to optimize your homocysteine levels because elevated homocysteine can suggest low levels of methylfolate or 5-MTHF, low levels of vitamin B12, like methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin, low levels of vitamin B6 or P5P, impaired methylation capacity, low glutathione or transsulfuration dysfunction or your ability to make cysteine, which is important for many functions, which we'll discuss in a separate video, so stay tuned. And elevated homocysteine can also mean possible gut absorption issues. It can also mean high toxic burden or oxidative stress and genetic variants or SNPs that can be affecting your methylation efficiency can cause high homocysteine. And so we're going to talk about some of those genetic variants that influence homocysteine. Of course, if you haven't already, I have a video on the most common one 
MTHFR. So if you missed that, please go ahead and check it out. But if you have a variant of MTHFR, either CT or AC, you have reduced conversion of folic acid to active 5-MTHF, and this leads to decreased remethylation of that homocysteine to methionine. You may also have other methylation gene SNPs, like MTR and MTRR, and these affect vitamin B12 recycling, which are critical for converting homocysteine into methionine. Another gene variant, CBS, or cystathione beta synthase, is an enzyme that's involved in converting homocysteine into cysteine. So upregulating this may actually deplete homocysteine too quickly, and this lowers levels shifting sulfur metabolism, which can lead to sulfur sensitivities. Now another gene that I've talked about is COMT or COMT. If you missed that video, go ahead and check it out. But if you've seen it, then you'll know that it's not directly altering homocysteine levels, but COMT variants, especially MET-MET, actually increase methyl group demand placing additional stress on your methylation cycle. Remember, COMPT is the back end of the cycle, so it can back up, leading to increased homocysteine. And then there are other supporting genes that are involved here, like SHMT1, which influences your folate use, DHFR, which impairs folic acid conversion, and SLC19A1, which regulates transport of folate into the cells. And believe me, there are many, many other genes here that can be at play. So that's why it's important to look at your genetics, but we'll talk about that in a moment. First, let's talk about solutions on how to lower your homocysteine or balance homocysteine naturally. Well, first you have to test, you have to understand what your homocysteine level is. And along with testing homocysteine, you also wanna test or consider checking serum folate, serum B12, or methylmalonic acid, MMA, plasma B6, magnesium, serum, and RBC magnesium, and serum zinc. Also look at inflammatory markers like CRP or high sensitivity CRP. Then if any of these nutrients are out of optimal ranges, you wanna make sure you optimize them. And also of course, if your homocysteine is elevated, then what you wanna do is make sure that you're optimizing those nutrients and specifically use targeted nutrients like 5-MTHF, which is methylfolate, especially if MTHFR is present, methylcobalamin or hydroxycobalamin, avoid cyanocobalamin, and if you missed my video on B12 and why people react, please watch that video because it could help you avoid a reaction to B12. But you also wanna make sure you're taking P5P or the active uh, B6 because this is needed for that transsulfuration pathway. And trimethylglycine or betaine acts as a methyl donor and sometimes that is necessary to help lower homocysteine as well as making sure you have optimal cofactors like zinc and magnesium, which are important for enzyme activity. You also wanna make sure you're addressing lifestyle factors. So make sure to limit smoking, limit alcohol use, because both of those things impair B vitamin absorption in your gut. Also increase your intake of leafy greens, beans, pasteurized meats, grass-fed meats, and eggs. And very importantly, heal the gut if you have digestive absorption issues or if digestion is impaired because you may have leaky gut, low stomach acid, SIBO, or candida. Now, homocysteine is often high, and that's what we focus on, but it can also be too low. And so it's important to understand that if you have low homocysteine, that is also a problem. And this could be related to that CBS gene that we just mentioned. If this is upregulated, it could lead to too low homocysteine. Also, if you have a zinc deficiency, that can also cause this problem. You see, too low homocysteine can actually lead to potential issues with glutathione production or sulfur metabolism. And another thing to look at here with homocysteine is if it's normal, but you still have a lot of symptoms, especially the symptoms we talked about, like brain fog, memory impairment, anxiety, and depression. Look for functional folate or B12 deficiency. Remember, those lab tests don't always show you optimal levels. Oftentimes, they have two wide ranges, and by the time you're abnormal there in regular lab values, you're already in a dysfunctional state. So make sure you're optimizing your nutrient levels, that's key. Also, make sure you know your genetic variants because they may actually mask your true need 
for supplements, and this is where genetic testing becomes very essential. There may also be medications at play. So metformin, birth control pills, and proton pump inhibitors like Prilosec and Protonix can actually deplete B12 and folate. Anticonvulsants like Depakote or Valpurate can actually impair your folate metabolism. And SSRIs and SNRIs may actually increase your methylation demand over time, which is why many people end up with treatment resistant depression and never even think to look at their homocysteine levels. But that's a topic for another video. Now, we also wanna take into consideration homocysteine during pregnancy. Because elevated homocysteine in pregnancy is associated with neural tube defects, preeclampsia, and miscarriage. So folate supplementation is critical, but should be in its active form, especially if MTHFR is present. And so, why does genetic testing enhance this entire process? Because genetic testing helps to clarify whether you need more or less methylation support, which forms of nutrients your body actually uses efficiently, how to avoid those side effects like anxiety, insomnia, or agitation from excess methyl donors and those B vitamins, and also helps tailor a methylation protocol to your variants, which is key to sustainable mental wellness. So genetic testing takes the guessing completely out of the equation, and it helps us to understand why your homocysteine and other nutrients are suboptimal or abnormal. And when we know the why, we can better optimize your mental health and get rid of all those other supplements that you're probably taking and don't even need and give you just what your body needs. Homocysteine isn't just a cardiovascular marker. It's a global indicator of methylation efficiency, nutrient status, and neuroinflammation. So if you're experiencing mood swings, cognitive decline, or fatigue, and no one can figure out why, this one lab test may actually hold a huge piece of the puzzle. So if you want a personalized approach to optimize your mental health using nutrition and genetic insights, visit my website to learn more. The link will be in the description. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon because our next video will be talking about SAMe, which is one of the most powerful methyl donors. And we'll talk about why it's important and why it's not for everyone. So, as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.